Today we're gonna to talk about weeds and how to keep them out of your garden. I know this is against the gardener's rules, but I actually love weeds. They make a really good weed tea fertilizer. I'll link a video and you can go watch that after you're done watching this video, but don't tell your friends. There's only so much time in the day, so we just can't have the whole garden overrun with weeds smothering out our plants, now can we? So today I'm gonna to share six methods on helping you manage your weeds. Now, a weed is simply a plant growing in a place that we don't want it to grow. And most of the time, they are hardier than the plants we are trying to grow. So it is important that we maintain our gardens and manage the weeds so that they're not competing with the sun and the nutrients and the water that our plants also need. So one thing we can do is smother them. So a couple months before you even plant, you could lay down a tarp in the area that you're going to be planting and kill off all of the vegetation underneath. That actually works really well. Another way to smother is by doing something like I've started here. Now I have laid down cardboard and then on top of that I put down a layer of chipped wood and then on top of that, I put some grass. Now, you don't have to do all that. You could just lay down the wood chips, and I'm actually probably going to be taking this grass off of here. I was just thinking next year, I might turn this into a giant blueberry patch, and so I wanted to be adding nutrients to the soil. However, if you put mulch down, slugs will come. So mulching your garden is so good for it, especially to keep it nice and moist so the water does not evaporate. However, slugs love it. I don't usually put mulch down in my garden because we have a million slugs here. But this year I'm doing an experiment and seeing if I can manage this garden area and keep the slugs out of it and also mulch at the same time. But that's a whole nother video. Let's carry on. So just a tip here, if you do not have access to a lot of cardboard or newspaper or craft paper, go to the local small businesses. They will be so happy that you come and take that off their hands. Another thing to consider when mulching is if you're using some sort of a grass, grass clippings, hay, or something's manure that ate grass, like a cow or a horse, there's a chance it could be contaminated with herbicides. And there are some herbicides out there that will not hurt the animal, go right through into their manure and be active in your garden for up to three or to four years, which means your garden would be pretty much ruined for three to four years. The seedlings just can't prosper. They start to come up and they become shriveled. Um, it's just a bad thing. You do need to know where those materials come from before you lay them in your soil. And I've been told that if it's a legume sort of grass, like um, alfalfa, that it's safe, and then I've also been told, no, it's not safe. So I would rather err on the side of caution and just find out exactly where your materials came from, have they been sprayed, and if so, with what. Tip number two is water just the plant you want to water. Now, as you'll see, I have a bunch of little weeds here because I haven't weeded recently, but I'm only having weeds along my water line. The rest of the soil is looking pretty good. Now I'm not knocking it if you only have sprinklers and that's what you need to do to water your garden. Water away with your sprinklers. But you will grow more weeds because they're getting what they need. They need to have sun, nutrients, and they need to have water. So hand watering with a hose or a watering can or with a soaker hose or a drip irrigation system waters closer to just the plant that you're trying to grow and so it does eliminate some of the weeds from coming up. My next tip is to attack early and often. And what I mean by that is as soon as you can identify the plants that you planted and want opposed to all the weeds around them, start getting rid of all these little guys. The smaller they are, the less damage they're gonna potentially cause when you pull them up by their little roots because as they get bigger, their roots are gonna interact with these roots. And so it's just really nice to get rid of them as early as possible. That being said, my rows are a bit of a jungle at first when the plants are a little slower to germinate than the weeds and I really can't distinguish 
what my plant is compared to the weeds. So sometimes my weeds get a little bit out of control before I actually start to even try to weed them out because I don't want to accidentally be picking my seedlings. And that's okay, that's just how it happens to work out. You also want to get them young because you don't ever want them to go to seed and make more baby weeds. Now one thing I do that is probably considered controversial because some people say don't disturb the soil because you'll bring up more weed seeds. I disturb the soil. I disturb the soil every single day. Let me explain. So currently my weeds are getting a little out of control for me because I've had to work so much the last two weeks. But generally what I do is I just walk through my garden. These are the path, this is the path. And even if it just looks like soil, now you can see the weeds coming up in here, but even if it just looks just like soil, I just rake it. And I do this, I, I get through my entire garden once a week, and it works pretty well. Now if you can put down mulch, you don't have to do this, but since I live in slug heaven, I don't put down mulch in this garden. Now another thing about attacking early and often is if you only have so much time in the in the week in the day make sure around your plants is your priority you know if they walk if you have weeds in the walkway or you know farther out from your plant it just might be how it's gonna be but try to keep the ones right around your plant taken care of now bare soil equals weeds so like I mentioned before if you can not put mulch down put a mulch down because that will take care of all the area that you mulch and you won't have to worry about the seeds coming through especially if you put it down thick enough or if you put newspaper or cardboard or something underneath so in this area I have three rows of plants this row this row and this row okay this this was weeded about a week ago and this has not been weeded for about three weeks now I will weed this now that I have a little bit of time to do so but what's gonna happen is the lettuces are starting to get bigger. The bok choy are getting bigger. I've got radishes in here. And eventually they're gonna grow big enough that they're gonna shade out a lot of these weeds. And then that won't be quite an issue anymore. So I like to plant thick and close together. Now if it's a time of the year where you're not actually using your soil to garden, plant a cover crop. A densely planted cover crop can eliminate a lot of the weed pressure in the spring because it will smother out all those grasses and things that are a pain. And if you don't choose to work it into the soil, you can just cut it down and you'll have a lot of compostable material available. It's a, it's a good thing. Now for tip number five, not everybody can do this, but if you can, get yourself some chickens and ducks. They get rid of so many bugs, good and bad, and seeds. They like to eat the plant seeds. Um, so the weeds will be less plentiful if you let your chickens and ducks run around in the garden patch before you plant it out. Now my sixth temp is to burn them down. Get yourself a fire torch and use it between the rows to burn up all your weeds. So I don't have one of those flame throwing torches for my garden. And kids, my children, if you're watching this, my birthday's next month. Looks so nice, freshly weeded. That took me maybe a minute to get all those weeds out of that little bit of the row. And that's gonna be the most labor intensive weeding that I have all season. Just when the plants are coming up and you have to get all the plants away from them, the first weeding takes more time. Um, after that, they're gonna be bigger and stronger than any of the weeds coming up and they'll be easy just to whisk away. Out here harvesting, see some weeds, pluck them away, and life is good. I believe a weed-free garden may be an oxymoron. I'm not sure there is such a thing, but we can definitely learn how to maintain them and manage the weeds that we do get. Now I think the easiest way to go with no weeds is to do a bed in which you have cardboard or thick newspaper on the bottom, and then you just fill it up with all the stuff you could find, such as grass clippings and leaves and all that sort of stuff. And definitely there's less weeds in these. Well, that's all I've got for today. So until next time, see ya.